I looked at it on you turn my phone on. I would like to call to order this June twentieth meeting of the Ascension Parish Council. At this time we will have the invocation led by uh, Mr. Ken Dawson, followed by the pledge. If you'll stand and remain standing, please. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because your word says that whoever wants to be great in your kingdom, let them be the servant of all. So as we come tonight, we thank you that you place in our heart to serve the people of Ascension Parish, to look out for their good and well-being as we protect the parish from any event, and we do the best that we can to provide the services it requires to do. We pray for the people of this area. We thank you for blessing them and continue to watch over them. We thank you for watching over us during every situation, during the situation with the storms, and those that were touched by the recent tornadoes that hit the area, we continue to ask that you bless their families. Give us the wisdom to do your people's business well this evening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have one member of the council has, who has not arrived yet, uh, Councilman Turner. I have not heard from him, so I'm not sure if he's on his way or not. There are no chairs additions. There is a uh, comment that I'd like to make. I want to remind everyone that the July 4th meeting of the parish council has been canceled. And that meeting, our, our next, so our next regularly scheduled meeting will be on the 18th of July. Uh, if you have any uh, comment on any um, item on this agenda about which you'd like to speak, please fill out a card, get with Cinnamon. She'll turn that in. You'll have three minutes at the appropriate time to uh, make your public comment. We are going to pass on item number five and move to item number six, which is the parish president's report. Mr. President. We still compiling how, how much debris we uh, picked up, and we're going to make another pass next week, and we should be pretty much done at that time. Um, but if anybody calls, we're going to pick it up if it's from that uh, last rain event and tornado. Uh, we have about we have three three houses houses that are uh, devastated, and um, they they all three have insurance. If they didn't have insurance, we would pick it up at the road, but they have insurance to do that. Uh, there's about a dozen houses that have water. And uh, so those people put like flooring and different things at the road and we pick, we pick it up. Um, so that's, we'll be able to give you a report at next meeting on the, the cost, basically. We didn't have to change anything at the dump so far, you know, it wasn't that bad. But if anybody from that event uh, still has uh, needs stuff picked up, we, we have a new grab, gravel truck and we will pick it up. Uh, from the event, we had uh, a, uh, a card sent from a uh, subdivision thanking everybody and uh, also a thank you, a letter from, uh, from soil conservation people. Senator, would you let the council see this? This was from the neighbors of Fields Court, and every street I went down was telling me how thankful they were and how hard our men worked. In fact, you know, uh, they were working so hard, and, and lunch came up on us, and I uh, told uh, Rick to go ahead and get them lunch, because they were, you know, just working very hard. So we appreciate that much, very much, and. Uh, Y'all got any questions on it? At the next meeting, we'll give you a total on the, the cost of the event. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Item number seven, the consent agenda. Simon. Adoption of April 4th, 2019 regular council meeting minutes. Adoption of April 23rd, 2019 special council meeting minutes. Approval of substantial completion for asphaltic concrete reconstruction and overlay improvements 2018 master contract. 
approval of substantial completion for asphaltic concrete reconstruction overlay improvements 2018 task for approval to declare freeze road a surplus amendment to professional services contract with dr j robert barnes to provide for continuing education in the area of child psychiatry additional one thousand dollars not to exceed two hundred fourteen thousand two hundred dollars total bid items to accept lowest responsive bid as follows 2019 road widener offset vibratory four foot roller attachment louisiana cat forty nine thousand nine hundred and ten dollars 2019 fuel truck with one thousand one thousand gallon tank courtesy ford one hundred and thirty nine thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars shoulder and side paver attachment road widener louisiana cat forty one thousand five hundred dollars hope villa pump station replacement debbie street project project utl 17002 and project pm 1901008 boone services llc 193000 request for quote hope villa wwtp blower replacement mitchell contract in ink $84500 and lamar dixon north rv lot panel replacement gonzales electric service inc $25952 Second. Just uh, let me ask first if anyone has any wish to remove any of these items from the consent agenda. If not, then uh, the chair will accept the motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Kluot, second by Mr. Lambert to approve the consent agenda. Are there any objections? Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. <laughs> Item number eight. Approval of a contract with Meyer Engineers for the Santa Mall Splash Park Pad Design Services, AE Project Number 20-2506D. Ms. Jones. On February 13, 2019, the Ascension Parish Recreation Department received a proposal from Meyer Engineers to provide professional design services for the Santa Mall Park Splash Pad. It is the recommendation of the Ascension Parish Department and project management staff to seek your approval and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this service. Motion. Sorry. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Kluot, a second by Mr. Dim Benny Johnson. Randy, do you have any comment on this? It's exciting. I would, I would, li I would like to ask everybody to support this. Uh, Santa Mall Park is in very bad disarray. Past the flood of 2016, we're trying to move forward, trying to get, get a building back that at least 18 to 24 months out from right now and looking at improvements there. Mr. Lambert. One question uh, on this park. Are we doing the recycle with the water? Are yes. We, okay. Yes, sir. We are. Okay. That's, that's what we need to do. Mr. Joseph. No, uh, that, that was the question on the recycle because uh, we already had a, a system. We already have a uh, design for the water spray park already. I just was wondering why I was getting another engineer for it. And if just due to the uh, recycling of the water, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Mr. Dawson? Um, I don't have a problem, Randy, supporting this. I just have some uh, question about the process. And so uh, did we get the... This is the only proposal that we got on this? The answer is yes. Yes. So I see these uh, calculations of 10.77% uh, of the construction costs. Wh where, does, where does that number come from? Well, I feel like we have a representative from Myers Engineer here tonight. Ray, you want to just... Is that it? Ray, That's if it. you'd uh, come to the podium where you can answer some questions. So if you'll just step up to the podium, that way you can answer. I'm Ray Harley with Meyer Engineers. What was the question, Mr. Bill? Let's say you have a total fee, 10.77 percent. Where, where does that number come from? Uh, it comes from, uh, we, have, we have ASE curbs. We have all kind of uh, data that we have. We also, have, we, we do a manpower projections. We try and do two different, two or three different ways to make sure that the price that we provide is a very fair price. So, I mean, I guess maybe this is coincidental. But when we take the 10.77 percent, then we add 5,500 dollars. It magically comes up to 49.9, which happens to be the it, limit on what on on bidding it out or what what is. 
I don't know what. Above uh, fifty is what? Fifty thousand. I don't know what. I don't know what the number. I, I don't have the things in front of me. If uh, if you want to show them to me, that'd be great. Well, part of it is we don't know what the we don't know what the topo and the, that, that's just estimates on the topo and things. We don't know what the the actual cost will be. Well, you've got lump sum price. Yeah, it is. But I'm just saying is if it goes over that, then I'm going to eat it. I have to eat the rest of well, it. Well, all I'm saying is, is that 10.77. Mm -hmm. You took 10.77 percent of, of the $400,000 construction, then mm -hmm. you added the supplemental services, a lump sum, and lo and behold, it came up to 49.99999999. If, if you look at this, Mr. Bill, the, uh, it's actually when I'm looking at it. This is the FP&C curve. This is the facility planning and control. That's I don't what have any idea what. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just saying that that sounds awfully coincidental to me. Uh, well, I'll, I'll have to tell you, it's the forty-four. The forty-four thousand was what the design fee would be, and then the other things were put in there in case we need to do surveying and things. So the ten point seven seven. Where did that come from? That comes from a, if the state has a whole set of standards with the facility planning and control. Uh, so I could go and look at those standards, and I could find this ten point seven seven. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. We don't. We don't. Uh, we feel it's very. It's a fair price because the state does all of their buildings, all of their facilities do it that way. Yeah. I'd rather copy something else, but that's okay. I'm I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Sadler? Yeah, um, I, I would have preferred rated that the supplemental services lump sums of topo and geotech and drainage actually, as Bill said, been put into the the number. But maybe I, maybe I don't understand it. Maybe it can't. Is it the ten point seven seven percent fee fixed or whatever? But to be that as may, I'm not necessarily against this, but it does look. You know, I want to be on record to say it's kind of funny. We we have that fifty thousand dollar balance as Mr. Um, let's say balance figure out there as Mr. Dawson indicated, and to throw a lump sum that just I don't know if he said magically. If not, I'll offer the term comes to forty nine nine hundred. It, it it's just the kind of thing that can, it gets this council with our constituents in Dutch. So I'm just say I would just say I'm uncomfortable with that. The other question, Madam Chair, uh, woman, I have is. Where is this money coming from? Is this already in our budget and it's coming out of the general fund uh, for recreational work? Yes, it's already been approved, Councilman, and sadly, um, it was a budget amendment that was done a while ago during the same time when they did the budget amendment for the expansion of the gym. So the money for the design of those projects was also put in at the time. So the gym was, was $3 million, but I mean, it, it, you're going to see another parks coming up after this. I mean, I just want to be sure we're not... Especially in election year, throwing up a whole bunch of splash parks to make people. Happy. This is just for design. I'm not accusing that's yeah. what's happening. I'm just right. This is just for design. Yeah. Right. That's this cost is for the design of those those parks. So it's being funded out of the general fund that normally goes a good bit to recreation, and we, we're not going beyond funds that this council's already right exactly discussed. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. You're welcome, Madam Chair. Yes, Please. Mr. Kluat, go right Yeah, ahead. I just want to make clear to the public, the people out there, that I'm not running for re-election. I'm trying to help the Santa Mar Park get rebuilt and the people of Santa Mar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> okay. There's any another item right after it, so I figured I'd Yeah, say and I'll, yeah, so are right there, there any <laughs> further questions? <laughs> any further questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Okay. No, number nine, Goodness. approval of a contract with Meyer Engineers for the Dutchtown Library Splash Pad Design Services, AE Project Number 201406C. Ms. Joan. Uh, library Splash Park. Flash pad. It is the recommendation of the, of the Ascension Parish Recreation Department and project management staff to seek your approval and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this service. Thank you very much, Ms. Joan. So I'm going to comment at this point, I, I, and I want to assure everyone that um, we've been working on this for several years now. Yeah. Uh, this is not something that's right. new. It has nothing to do with an election year. It is about, uh, we had an opportunity in cooperation with the library. Uh, they offered us an opportunity to use, uh, utilize and do a uh, CEA with them 
that to give us the space, the land behind the library uh, that they were not going to use for library services. And uh, I've been working on trying to get a splash pad in, in my district uh, that would benefit both Travis's district and mine, uh, and Todd's, who all come up uh, 621, uh, Docs, who also comes up 621 and 73, so that we could um, accomplish that, we need, the land was so expensive that it has been prohibitive. Mm -hmm. And when the library uh, made, it, made us aware that they had this land and they were happy to enter into a CEA, they voted, I would say it's been at least a year ago, maybe more, uh, to make this land available to the parish for the purpose of building a splash pad. And that way, uh, the parish would not have quite as, an ex as expensive a project because we would not have to uh, purchase land. So that was the, that's the way this all came about. I thank you gentlemen for your previous questions because I think it, it helps us to have an opportunity to explain. Um, but I'm excited, I'm very excited. I'm gonna ask you all to support this. I think it's an opportunity for us to put uh, some recreation for, for our kids in our area uh, that do not necessarily play baseball or so play soccer. Or, uh, but And I also envision it. I asked Ray, this is going to be a little bit different than some of the other splash pads in that it's, I didn't care to see a splash pad with things that dumped out of water. And, you know, I wanted just something that bubbled. Uh, I, I envisioned uh, the members of my community who where there's a high school right down the street that uh, they might take senior pictures there. Uh, it would be something that was a part of our community that would give us a sense of place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I envisioned young adults there uh, taking their engagement photos and their wedding pictures so that it would, so that it would be a part of their community. And uh, since it was uh, also attached to the library, I thought it was a great opportunity to utilize our resources at the library to expose our young families to the library and w to also utilize parking that was already there. It's, you know, I struggle often, and all of you have heard me say, I don't like duplication of services. Uh, I, I like to see us utilize when we can uh, the parking lot of one building to use an to assist another. So that is what we've, we've accomplished here. If anyone has any questions, I would, I'm happy to hear those now. Mr. Lawler. Uh, yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, I fully support this. I hope that this is a, uh, a guideline to how we can do things in the future, that we coexist with other mm -hmm. school board, with the sheriff's office, with the fire departments, to make sure that we're not duplicating parking lots, bathrooms, right. uh, utilities, running utilities in and out of areas. Uh, this is an excellent way to do things. You know, just the cost savings on land. To, to go purchase land, especially in the northern part of the parish, is extremely expensive to so to be able to work with the school board I think this is an excellent way to do it it saves a ton of money for everybody involved and it really does you know help parents they can take their kids to the library and then they can take their kids to the spray park encourage reading hey you you, you know you, you play a little time at the spray park you'll get some reading in or mm -hmm. vice versa whatever it may be so I fully support this and I, I certainly you, make the motion well, this actually the, uh, Aaron just, just for you the, the these in, this includes a few pavilions it's, it's again, it, as Ms. Terry said, it's a, it's a, it's more of an experience versus what it was at the Santa Mar Park. Santa Mar Park is a playground. I mean, that's what we're. It's going to be. It's going to be li aligned with a playground type of splash pad. This is not. I mean, you, this is a this is a Shaw Center. You know, uh, three or four different uh, gaze you know gazebo uh, types benches. A little different than a little different than the other one. So we so. You didn't pick up on the economy of scales because we, we really have two separate designs. Can we laminate books? Is that to get them out in the spray park? <laughs> there you go. So uh, the chair would entertain a motion so that we can begin so further moved. discussion. I have a motion by Councilman Lawler, a second by Councilman Cagnolotti. Mr. Satterley. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairwoman, again. And, and let, let me be very clear. If, if I in any way, it was not my intention, offended uh, the gentleman, uh, Randy Kluot, um, really? uh, uh, I, I fully realize he wasn't running for office and making a comment I made, as you might have noticed as we reviewed back in the film. I was coupling it to the next one coming up, and we do have a candidate uh, uh, that is running, Ms. Castro, and she's now disclosed her feelings on it. And, and I concur, and I concur that we need as many of these as we can get. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one already actually in D7, uh, which is not, again, in my district four, but it's, it's on a boundary at A-Line and Highway 73, and 
I'm absolutely positive that a lot of the people that reside in my district uh, cross over the line there to, to Aaron's uh, borough and, uh, and play in that park. In fact, I know that as a fact. And I'm sure that the one we're proposing now in District 8, likewise in Dutchtown, as Terry said, very close to Highway 621, mm -hmm. another shared boundary I have with Mr. Casso. Um, so to, to, be, to be absolutely certain, I just wanted the public to understand this, and I'm glad they responded, both of them, in the way they did. So we're bracketing my district, and one day maybe we'll have one, but I'm not in a hurry because all public, let me repeat that, all public people, that means anybody from any district, um, theoretically, if they wanted to, they can come from Donaldsonville and cross the Mississippi River Bridge and the Sunshine Bridge and come over and lay now in, in, the, in the, the newly proposed D7 and D8 parks, uh, not the new D7, but they had a D8 park and in the, in the Santa Mar Park, I should say. So I'm, I'm going to support this again. The problem I had, the, the biggest with it, on the previous one, I have it again. So I just wanted people to know it. It's in our packets and they can't see it. Is that we have, again, two figures in front of us. One is the basic engineering services again. Mm -hmm. And it comes to, uh, I won't even repeat the sum, but there's that supplemental services again for topo, geotechnical, and drainage. This time it comes up to 9,000 because the other figure is at 40,900. So now we're at, as Bill Carson talked about, 49,900. I would much rather see and be more comfortable with Figures coming in front of me where this was all rolled into one, and it doesn't present. Last night we had a big meeting at Tiggly Presses, the Pluses. And you know the biggest problem in riding that road right now, believe it or not, is the people don't trust us. Mm -hmm. So we, we just want to be careful that we're not saying we're just throwing this number up to the legally highest amount allowable. I think that's what Bill was trying to do. He was doing a better job probably than I was um, to circumvent the rule about over 50. Now we got to bid it out and, and so forth. Because what we don't know here is that, and I'm sure, Mr. Mr. Ray, your, your company's a fine company. I'm sure you're going to do a fine job and everything else. But we have no idea what other people would have bidded, whatever. Uh, I don't know. Well, if you want to throw in your <laughs> supplemental services in both of the parks, I'd certainly support that motion. But, and I'm not asking you to do that, sir. I, I'm sure it's, there are fair numbers and everything. It's just, what is the word Bill used? It's kind of mysterious that all of a sudden these numbers both times make up to $49,900. That's all I'm saying. Okay? So, so and Randy? Love you to death, bro. I'm glad you're having your park, even if you're not going to be here. Terry, glad to have one. I hope my, my constituents play in both of those parks, as well as uh, Aaron, your park is already there. And let's say your park, our park, everybody, so forth. But we got to be careful with this public trust stuff on this 49900 business. 49900 so Can I respond to uh, Well, absolutely. Yeah. So, so the FP and C curve is still used on the front, on the, on the front, front half. On the back half, what we do in the supplemental, yeah, when you go to Dutchtown, Dutchtown is going to require more surveying. It's going to require more. Uh, it's going to require a drainage analysis because it's wet. It, it's it's low back there, and so all of those things that weren't. And we're also at Santa Mar Rec already doing the recreation center. So we already have a lot of data there. So we were able to cut back on certain. Well, you sure things. you're asking for enough? Because if you ask for a little bit more, you'd be over fifty, and then it goes out on bid. Wait, say that one more time. Well. This one's nine thousand dollars. I forget what the other one was. What was the bill? For? But those those costs forty five hundred. So now it's double that. But I mean, it, they're from, just numbers from, to me, gee, sir. They honestly. come from the, the companies that we call to say, here's what we need, and they give us a price on it. Then we have a markup on it, and then that's what the numbers come out to be. I think we need to stop because I'm I'm fine with it, Madam Chairman. Well, I, I thank, thank you. you very much, Mr. Dawson. Yeah. Well, I mean, now you got eight point four eight coming from that curve it's instead good. of eleven. It's logarithmic. If it's if it's ha if it's higher construction yeah. cost, it's lower percentage. That's the way it works. And it's just another coincidence that when you combine those numbers, you come to forty nine nine. I'm sorry. I mean, whether it looks like a whether it looks like there's something that's that uh, you had the answer and worked back up to the problem, or whether it actually did that. It's. I mean, uh, I think the probabilities of the, both of those hitting that same number are just tremendously large, and I think that. You know, we're fooling ourselves if we think we're getting a lump sum price for this engineering work when we don't get another bid. For it is just to come to somebody and say, you know, give me a 49.9 and, and, and uh, we don't, we don't uh, get a comparative bid for that, I think is, is uh, you know, that it, it, it just smells. I'm sorry, the, the, the whole thing smells. I'm going to vote for it, Randy. I'm not going to vote against it, but I, I think that you know, this is a joke. It, well, it, it literally is a joke. I'm only defending my numbers because I put these numbers together. So these. Are well, I don't know. Numbers. You got these two numbers, and yeah. and magically they come up to the same bottom line. And you know, my my opinion is that we ought to just do it reimbursable. I mean, this is not. 
This is not uh, really a lump sum bid because you don't even have you don't have a, any competition. There's no other bids to compare it to, and then all of a sudden they both come up to a hundred dollars less than a bid limit. I think we really we really put ourselves at risk of not being in compliance with the with the uh, bid laws, public yeah, bid you, laws. You don't put pricing on on professional Fifth services. Percent. You can't consider price on professional. Well, what is this forty nine nine? That's the Fifth price percent. that's proposed in the contract. If you don't put that, you cannot consider pricing in professional services. Uh, that, that's crazy. Another thing that's crazy. But to come up with these two numbers being the same number for these projects that vary by seventy thousand dollars on the construction, I think is. Again, you know, this is this is just my opinion. I've looked at hundreds of bids, and and you know, it's I don't think it's you know I don't think it's a competitive bid. I'm sorry. We got one Anything question, else? Mr. Lambert. Ken, I don't know if uh, uh, Ray can answer this. Like on uh, the last park that we built in Donaldsonville, price-wise, do we remember that cost? But I know we may have a little bit extra on this one because yeah. Yeah, three, because we got a recycle system going on this one. More so expensive because it's going to be an upgrade. Of, from, yeah. But yeah, well, we, it's close to four. Uh, it was originally three twenty-five, but when we add the bathroom to it, and it, it, it came up, the bathroom came after what mm -hmm. it was close to three eighty. We actually, we, I actually yeah. went and researched it and found okay. out that we went. I was just we went to ballpark. I, I know this one's a little bit higher. Plus, it's. The, recy the recycling, the recycling, piece of it. and the reason why we looked more. at recycling because of the cost of water. Right. So we're not really out of the ballpark as far as compatible. No, no, we're no not. I mean that was one of the re that's one of the data points that I used to, to figure out where everything was. Yeah, that's why. And thinking. we've done pavilions because we, I mean, we do we do this kind of work all over the place. Right. Uh, I didn't make up the numbers. The numbers come from a database that we have. I'm so. Thank you, Ray. Uh, that's all I have. Yes, Mr. Mr. Uh, Joseph. Ray. <coughs> Ray. Do they have a bathroom on these? No, these are strictly no. splash parks. They have they have the recycled they have the recycled water system. We don't have bathrooms now. Now the Bathroom the rec center is going to go up at at Dutch Tent. Then you have the bathrooms at the at the libraries. Okay, uh, right. Mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, you have both of them have access, and Bathroom you will have track. access once the building comes up on the rec center. We have actually we've added bathrooms in the new design. Uh, Mr. R Mr. Randy reviewed the other day. It's be we because we, we're going to wind up wind up having eight or ten. Versus the two or three we had last time. Okay. So we've been able to upgrade with the ADA. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Are there any further questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. <coughs> Randy and I both thank you, gentlemen. Number 10, approval of substantial completion for the Mosquito Abatement Building Installation, Expe Expert Maintenance Services, LLC, Dean Thomason, Project Manager. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Have a motion by Councilman Dempsey Lambert, a second by Councilman Randy Kluot. Are there any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. <laughs> Item number 11. 11, intergovernmental agreement between the Parish of Ascension and the City of Donisonville for the use of parish facilities by the city to celebrate the City of Donisonville's 4th of July festival. Mr. Parrington. Yes, the city asked us to use the pavilion. They normally do this on the levy, but they're not able to go on the levy this year. We did it, I think, a few years ago also when they had the same problem. So they're just asking to have their fireworks display there. Motion. I have a motion by Mr. Oliver Joseph, sure. a second by Mr. Cagnolotti. Are there any questions? I have a any comments, Mr. Joseph? Mr. O'Neill. Yes, sir. They did ask for a uh, liquor license from yes. that. Did you yes. review? Okay. Yes. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. <laughs> Item number 12, a resolution to use funds from the council's professional services budget to hire an engineering firm to draft a to assist with the drafting and or draft a flood ma plain management ordinance. Um, several of us believe that it would uh, be helpful here to have a local firm work with us. Uh, we've, we are working productively with the parish president and his committee, but we also need to draft an ordinance and I believe we're gonna need to have some uh, stakeholder meetings. I think that it's important uh, that we have somebody local because I believe that they are uh, more familiar 
with our particular issues, not from a, a technical standpoint, but from a, uh, the ability to achieve a consensus. And I, I recommended GSA for one reason. I have worked very effectively with Kimberly Cole, who is, uh, has committed to work on this project with us if this is approved. And I like Kimberly very much, it's not, and it's not all about personal relationship. It is about uh, when she is in a room with a group of people who do not share the same uh, feelings, she's very, very good at um, maintaining first order, <laughs> and secondly, uh, staying on track and uh, coming out of that room with consensus. Uh, I've been very proud of this young female engineer uh, and appreciate her. Uh, there have been circumstances in particular on the Frog Bayou and Fish Bayou project where she handled some situations that were very complicated, uh, testy, and uh, we came out of the room with an agreement. So it is for that reason that I am recommending that. Uh, so O'Neill, I'll let you go from here on the resolution, please. You want me to read it? Normally we don't read it. If resolution. you don't want to read it, that's I fine. I will read it. If you'd like to read it, that's fine. Whereas the Essential Parish Governing Authority desires to enact a floodplain management ordinance, whereas Section 410 of the Essential Parish Charter states the Essential Parish Governing Authority shall be vested with and exercise, shall exercise all <laughs> legislative power, whereas the Essential Parish has 58000 in its 2019 budget for professional service to the council, whereas GSA Consulting Engineers has experience with and familiar with the previous ordinances proposed and adopted, whereas the Essential Parish Governing Authority desires to use part of the funds to contract with GSA Consulting Engineers to draft the floodplain management ordinance that uses the ordinance adopted by the Council of May 8, 2019 and vetoed by Parish President 2019 as a base document, then use the documents presented to the Council by the Parish President to outline the reasons for the veto to draft the modified ordinance for floodplain management. Now, therefore, be it authorized the Parish President to sign a contract for engineering uh, professional services of less than $50,000 to GSA Consulting Engineers for the drafting of an ordinance for floodplain management. GSA Consulting Engineers shall update the council through the council chair on the status of the ordinance. The contract shall be funded from the professional services item in the 2019 legislative budget. Any questions? Motion. I have a motion by Mr. Kluot. Second. Second by Mr. Lawler. Any questions or comments? Well, I just would like to add, uh, ask the parish secretary to fill in these blanks for the dates that that it be adopted with the uh, correct dates rather than the blanks. Yeah, that is me. Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Savage? Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, You're welcome. My question is under the uh, therefore be it resolved uh, ending uh, to the resolution. Part one, where it says that we will be authorizing uh, Mr. Matassa to sign a contract for engineering services, and that's going to be with GSA, f of less than $50,000. What exactly does that mean? Is there a specific number? What are we authorizing here? 499. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Randy, now I know you're not really mad at me, so we, or Bill Dawson. Or, and, and by the way, I, I am running again, and so I, I have to ask these questions for my constituents because they want me to be a good shepherd of our money. But th there's so many numbers below fifty thousand. It could be a dollar. It could maybe, be maybe five thousand. It could be thirty-five the, nine. It could maybe be maybe the chairwoman had a, had a dollar figure in mind. Uh, I have She's not. Well, that. earlier, earlier, the, let me say this too. Excuse me for interrupting, Mr. Madam Chairwoman. Right I don't know if I still have the floor or not, but. The, the, the beginning part says that we got 58000 in the budget. Well, we can't use that. We know why. We don't even, even men, mention that. Uh, as Mr. Kluot correctly stated, Forty nine nine again, is it? I don't know because later on it doesn't say that either. And before I vote, I'd like to know what that number is. Can it be fixed now or are we still negotiating with GSA? The number that we have, cons have talked about is that it should take around $30,000, maybe less, to accomplish this. So uh, I think that that was, I, I felt comfortable with that figure and, uh, and I'm extremely comfortable with Kimberly. So uh, we, if, can amend. If you, uh, we can absolutely set a not to exceed amount if you all would like That's and it. then they can do whatever um, they can get done with that amount of is, money. Is GSA here to answer they, they would do it for 30,000 or less? Or? I, no. I don't see anybody. All right. So that, that's an issue. If we can amend it without them, we, we're kind of amending 
and it's two parties to every contract, right? I'm not an attorney, but well, I don't think this is the contract. This is just I know, but if there's going to be one, I mean, why, why waste anybody's time if it's not an acceptable mm -hmm. number? Then I mean, you're but telling us that you hold you, on one second, Mr. I see that the bill's not finger coming up. Well, you might have a piece you know, of my, information too. And, and me looking at this, I'm I'm thinking that it it leaves that up to the administration. Let the administration negotiate that. That's they they have a conversation with GSA, right. and they and they come up with it. We authorize him to sign that up to fifty thousand. And then they they make that determination of what it takes to, you know, it's going to take some, whoever does this is going to take some review back and forth of these documents to know what it, what, you know, how much it's going to take and then let them give, anyway, leave it to, I think, uh, authorize it so the administration can actually uh, set the number of the contract. Mr. Sadie. Yeah, so it sounds like <laughs> Bill that you would be happy with 49.9 and I guess everyone else would too. <laughs> this time, <laughs> this time. I don't tend to be uh, funny or flippant about any of this, but I do have a second question. And, and, I, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a record to even say I, I generally support this because I, I, I'm not at all happy with what's going on with the, the president appointed committee because it obviously it, it, it excludes a lot of input from, from the people, that, all the people that voted on, on, the, on the veto resolution. But Except we need myself. We, yeah, right. I, I just said a lot. I didn't say everybody. Okay. Certainly, I'm not sitting on it, and I was one of the people that, that aren't, aren't happy with it. Uh, but but the point being, I do believe, Madam Chairwoman, and, and I, I praise the, the effort. I think it's more acceptable, definitely is to me and hopefully to the public I represent, to have an independent, now a third party, take a look at it. Hopefully, it's not biased by anything, as this resolution says, who has expertise and, and knows about the previous ordinance, what's in the present one, and maybe a way we can really resolve it. At least we'll have one more input in it, and you know nobody does anything for nothing. I understand that too, but another limitation I see in this resolution, I don't know who drafted it, is what's the time frame on this company to bring forward? A, a My discussions with because we, we we're, we're about to talk about moratorium, for example, and so mm -hmm. this is a good segue. To, those things are inextricably tied. My discussion with uh, Kimberly was that this could be accomplished in three to four weeks, maybe. No, probably not less than three weeks, but not much more than four. Do we need anything like that, Madam Chairwoman? Any resolution to hold their feet to that fire? Or I don't or believe so. I think they're uh, they have, they're highly motivated. Want to make that money quickly? Pardon? They would want to make their money quickly. I, I think they want to help us solve this problem quickly. As well as solve the problem quickly. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Any other questions, <coughs> Mr. Johnson? Um, so I'm curious about this, um, um, the intent of the ordinance is that was brought to the council before that was vetoed. Um, so why wasn't this done prior to that happening? If we had the holes in it prior to the ordinance being brought to the council for adoption, this seems to be that it would make sense to do this prior to that. We, we I'm happy to answer that. I think it might have. Uh, however, we did not uh, we did not really realize until the day after passage when we met with the administration in a, a meeting uh, that uh, the the staff found some challenges around implementation and uh, compliance between ordinances, and so uh, we, having discovered that, uh, it, as it's unfortunate to say, it we didn't quite grasp all of the, the uh, integral pieces uh, as we were drafting this thing for the council. So we would like to make sure that doesn't happen again. And so that, that lends to another question that as of the meeting we had yesterday, I think mm -hmm. in talking to, to staff, they've gone through that document and have identified the issues that they've had with the document and have come up with answers or resolutions to that already uh, that answers most of the questions that I think, from what I'm hearing, we're trying to, to resolve. I think that they do. Uh, we did have a productive meeting yesterday. I participated. It was outstanding. However, I feel like if we want to be sure that both sides are happy that a neutral party looked at this, and it is, I believe this party would be neutral, then we can uh, move forward confident whatever we pass has as minimal conflicts and has reached, helped us to reach a consensus, not only amongst this council and the administration, but some of our uh, stakeholders. 
Any further questions? Yeah. Mr. Kulak. Yeah, I just want to note that uh, I want to give due to the people that worked real hard on the first council ordinance. Uh, one of Mr. Dawson, you put a hell of a lot of effort into it. Doc, you, you put some effort into it, and about five, at least five to seven other council members I remember at different times, so I'm not naming everybody. But uh, through this process a good while back, there was a, a, a you know, as we, if you'd run into challenges trying to put put some law together, we uh, we get uh, we go to legal firms and we look for people that w have experience with that. That's a very costly venture. For you know this opinion, that opinion. You know, if we do this, what what about it? Um, I don't have a problem with uh, an engineering firm uh, taking a look at this right now. I know we've had Bill, you know, had to say, hey, we want to do this, so let's let legal look at it. And we start with O'Neill, and then we end up with somebody that's specialized in it and all that. So that, you know, there's some, there's some things that got to be hashed out. So right now I think we've answered most of the legal questions, and uh, so we just, just got to be whether, whether what we say within a document is feasible and applicable. Not necessarily applicable, I take that back, whether it's feasible. Whether it's feasible for us to turn over a law that the administration can actually work and we can put forward and they can explain it to the people that come forward for permits, the people that have land and things like that. So um, I don't feel bad working less with legal and more with an engineering firm that, that has experience in this. Thank you. There were some comments that I have to forgive. I apologize there are comments from the public on this issue so having heard those we have a motion and a second we had m my comments and several others I'd like to hear from the public it now it's for 13 is that for 13 yeah. oh I'm sorry I, That'd be the next I thought I, I apologize I've already flipped my page so we'll get to 13 in a moment so we have no public comment we have a motion and a second any further discussion. questions one yes mr. I uh, will have two go ahead mr. Lambert thank you mr. Chair. Um, I guess, and like you said, likewise from the meeting yesterday, um, I want to thank Mr. Uh, Ken Dawson. Uh, very productive meeting, and I think we are headed in the right direction. Um, do you see anything we need to add to this, Ken, as far as, I mean, you deal with these price-wise all over. So, I mean, and, I, and look, this has been a long process, and... Uh, many departments from building to I see our uh, drainage guy out there Ron Salvo this has taken uh, uh, you know we're looking at 10 11 months here it would take some another parish most probably three years to implement this and we are doing it very quick so um, I'm very proud of what we're doing and uh, I think the money will be well spent what did you guys say? Thank you very much. Any other? Mr. Dawson, did you no, have a comment? I do. I have a, I there, I, I have a question. Madam. Okay. There, Doc, go ahead and ask yours, and then I want to have yeah. Ms. Vickers, who well, has uh, indicated so that she desires to speak, to come up, please. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to um, probably, I think, eventually support this, because at this stage, quite frankly, probably like most of the people sitting up here, I'd do anything to get a fill ordinance passed. That said, my next comment is going to sting a bit. Um, I didn't elaborate too much in, my, in the first round, but part of the problem I have with this public appointed committee that we have that met last night uh, on, the, on the veto of the Phil Ardens is that the public is, is excluded from those discussions, and obviously that includes myself. So how do I or the public I represent know in any way, and do we just have to trust that maybe a lot of the problems, as Councilman uh, Johnson was just indicating, have already been... He's on that committee, and you are, Madam Chairman, as is, uh, who am I leaving out, Mr. Cagnolotti, Mr. Um, Kluot. Kluot, and so forth, with the five that are on there, have, not, have already been worked out. And so therefore, what are we, you know, are we paying them for the, with that sliding scale amount of money, whatever? And then my second comment would be, how, how will the veto committee, which is still active, and, and I assume you're all gonna have more meetings and so forth, um, interact with, with GSA, how is the input going to get back and forth and so forth to come with a final <coughs> ordinance that I so desperately I'm, would like to see I'm, passed? I'm happy to answer your questions. If, if 
my short-term memory is not great, but your, your second question, they will communicate together not only through me and, and to all of you, but to uh, each individual uh, with the administration. They are free to discuss these things with the administration. We want to see them uh, work together collaboratively and cooperatively. Uh, and your first question was, Doc? Uh, that, you know, that was we're talking about since the public is excluded. You know, ah, uh, in the meeting. Uh, I, I assure you that uh, I'm happy to report to you that it was productive. It was not, uh, it, we have not reached a consensus, but it was productive. So may, so, so may I ask, Madam been, Chair, women, is there a chair of this committee? Are there minutes at least since the public's not there? It's an it, internal meeting, and Mr. Dawson is uh, handling the uh, organization. If I may, Madam Chair, it would come back to the council as an ordinance, so it would go through the whole introduction. Oh, I understand. We eventually, we so got to vote on. I got, I got all that. I don't need to be educated that way anymore. But I've been around eight years. Been around the block like most people. It's not my first rodeo. But, but again, there, these deliberations are going on. They're, they're outside the scrutiny of. The, they don't violate open meetings law. I'll say that because it's five members and it takes six of members of the council to be a quorum. It's presidential appointed. I'm not even sure of the president for that. Precedent for that. There, there are no real minutes, and it's, again, it's just like the Tiggy meeting last night. Those people don't think that road needs to wire, be widened. Yet our administration, through this staff, is saying, hey, it's a dangerous road, number one in head-on collisions. And the people ask through me, show me, show me the money, show, show me that data. And, I'm, and, I, and, and sadly enough, I have to say, well, they won't even give it to me because they say it's confidential. It's through our PC data, whatever. Well, maybe it is and maybe it isn't, but the point is, if it's not if it isn't, if it's safe, and you know, why are we doing it? And we need to get the trust of the people. In the same way with this process here, and I, and I fully trust, Madam Chairwoman, that you'll be reporting faithfully back and forth, uh, uh, you know, whatever. But without minutes, without the public there, I'm not there, et cetera. I, I'm, you know, whatever. I guess what we have to do, it's going to be some sort of hybrid product, and we're going to have to wait until it comes in front of this this board, this this council, and overall vote on it. I don't see any other alternative. Um, there's, there's not enough here tonight for me to be against it. Um, less amount of money being spent, the better. You know, but but not quote. How, how does this work? Skimping to where we don't get the absolute correct result. I do like the idea of an, a third, even a, a hopefully neutral set of eyes looking at it. I'm not happy with what's going on, so I, it, it I guess a reasonable uh, compromise in that regard. And as I said, I'm, I'm as a result probably going to going to go for it. But that, wow. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Doc. I appreciate your comments. Anyone else have any comments they want to make? And then I'm going to invite Ms. Vickers to speak because it does indicate that she wants to speak on item 12. Ms. Vickers, I apologize for not getting to you. No, ma'am. I just filled it out. Not your fault. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, it is our money that you're sitting up here talking about. You're spending our money, the taxpayers' money, Yes, ma'am. And I just want you to remember that as you start opening up the pocketbook. We have other things that we need to be spending money on. Uh, Mr. Satterley would be very correct on all, every single one, the trust of the community. It doesn't matter that there's not that many people out here. I'm telling you, I talk to them. The trust of the community Everybody's watching, everybody's looking. And when you start coming up, I was at the meeting two uh, weeks ago, so I never hear about this. Well, now we're going to go get an engineer, and now we're going to pay th even $30,000. That's a lot of money when maybe we can use it on something else. You all should have come to a consensus. You've been speaking to one another. You've been talking. Do what's right for the people. It's got to be what's right for the people. I need somebody on this committee. I, I need at least eight of you to want to do what is right for the people of the parish of Ascension. Anyway, just remember that it's our money, and we're watching how you're spending it. Thank and you, I Ms. don't Fish. like that closed meeting deal. I do agree. Didn't know anything about that. That's how come I just put that on there. Uh, Closed stuff is not a way to get the trust of the people already. See, it's suspicious, very suspicious. 
So I don't know who the fight, who, whoever is on the committee. I would like their names because I just want to know. You got to be open. Sunshine. Lots of sun. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dear. Okay. So we have heard comment from the public and from each other. There is a motion and a second. Are there any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. <laughs> Item number 13, there are several public speakers and I don't want to uh, miss them. So let me get that out of the way. Item number 13 is public comment, Ms. Kim Christie. It is the discussion on a moratorium on fill in the floodplain. Hi, my name is Kim Christie and I live in Furryville. I am in support of the moratorium. I have an article here that appeared in the Greater Baton Rouge Business Report. Builders relieved as ascension field limit proposal fails. And I'd just like to read a couple of lines out of it. Builders acknowledge there are issues with the current practice. Another section, how do we not neg negatively affect the basin itself? Where I can answer that question, pier beam, chain wall, zero net fill. We've said that about a thousand times, but we need to define what that is. As I've understand it and researched, it's 100% fill mitigation. That's how you can say upstream, downstream will never be negatively impacted. And I have a couple of um, pictures I want to show. This is wrong. Okay. This is not very clear. But this is the assessor's map. This here is Highway 930. This is Muddy Creek. This is Jamestown 2, Jamestown 1. And I'll show you the floodplain on a map that's about the same size. And in Jamestown 2, the detention pond is right there in the floodplain. And also, they're putting unlimited fill. So now, any sheet flow goes back on the people. Charleston Road, there's a subdivision there, Renwood. Whenever Muddy Creek flow, floods, it goes back on the people. This is what we have allowed. And I'm sorry, Ms. Castle, I'm on the Please, ground. No, no apology this, necessary. This, this is what people are concerned about on the ground. So this happened, I, didn't, I knew about Highway 930, I didn't know about Muddy Creek, but the people in that neighborhood did. They showed up and spoke against drainage. The drainage in the area is bad. So we are doing things haphazardly. The builders admit something is wrong with what we are doing. I spoke to a councilman prior to the meeting. He says we're a couple of weeks from resolution and then we have to pay $30,000 to get to a resolution. We need a moratorium because we don't trust that you're going to get it done in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Spicer. Hello, council members. Uh, thank you for your service. I've been talking to y'all the last few weeks and meeting with y'all and stuff. I really appreciate y'all's job even more, and it's a very hard job. But I did have a question. The, res the moratorium is basically... Is it for new residential subdivisions only in the floodplain? Is that correct? Well, that's something we're discussing, Mr. Spicer, so okay. we appreciate your, I mean, I, this is generally not a dialogue, okay. but I have Got been you. trying very hard to make it very clear that this is a floodplain management ordinance, okay. and I think that we need to ha help people to understand that, that I, areas I that are outside the floodplain are not affected by this. Okay. So uh, in ans I wanted to answer that question. I would okay. not typically Thank do you. so. But you can continue your comments. I appreciate it. Um, I'm not sure if y'all are aware of this. I assume y'all are. But the DEQ is currently stopping in Prairieville area. They're not allowing um, outflow from any new subdivisions as far as the sewer. So right now, if you can't get a zero outflow sewer treatment facility, you can't build a subdivision. Mm -hmm. 
And basically, from talking to somebody that installs those today, they're two to three times more than a regular sewer treatment plant. So the cost could be 300000 to a million dollars more, depending on how big it is. So it's already kind of inadvertently stopping, the DEQ is actually stopping in the Prairie area. In the rest of the area, they're not, they've limited the flow to the Blind River, AB River, different segments of the, the flood system. And so same, in, the same, in the same thing, most of the sewer treatment plants being put in won't meet that, so they've basically shut them down. So inadvertently, the DEQ has actually kind of started almost a moratorium already. I don't know if you all realize that, so it's kind of already in effect where there's not many new subdivisions going in. But um, I want to talk about um, the moratorium. Additionally, the economic impact from moratorium will be felt long after the moratorium is over, as money from companies and residents will be spent in other parishes as businesses focus elsewhere. Once they set up shop elsewhere, it's more difficult to entice them back. Additionally, all of the plants need places to live for their employees, for new jobs, and plant expansions. Once a moratorium is in effect, it is much easier to keep. Businesses considering Ascension Parish for jobs and to increase revenue need rooftops to support their business as well employees to work in. I believe one of the biggest impasses between the opposing parties trying to get this thing passed is the two-foot BFE. I did a little research, talked to an expert on this. I'm not an expert by any means. But he said that there's to raise our community rating system, which we do want to do, we agree, we need that needs to be done. But there's about a ton of things that can be done. This one two-foot BFE will neither raise it nor stop it from going that one item. It has to be done with or not be done with variable other items. That one item won't make or break us. Um, Council, I ask you, I urge you not to place a moratorium, but work diligently with the parish president, the administration, the residents, and the builders to devise a long-term plan to encourage Ascension Parish to flourish. And like I said, I would be interested, maybe y'all could check before the next meeting, how many permits are actually being pulled for new subdivisions with DEQ already having a hold on the sewer treatment. Thank you, Mr. Spicer. Thank Appreciate thank your you. comments. Ms. Vickers. I live in Prairieville, Louisiana, which I was told is the highest point in Ascension Parish. And as you know from the meeting two weeks ago, on June 6th, when we had the flash flooding, three houses have now flooded. I walked up to the front of the subdivision and spoke to one of the owners to double check to make sure my facts are right. That gentleman said, no ma'am, we have never flooded, not even in 2016. So we all are aware that something is going on, something's wrong. All since I've been in Ascension Parish, I just keep seeing building after building after building, more and more construction. I keep asking where's the infrastructure, where's the larger drainage dish, ditches, uh, what about our pumps, have our pumps been replaced in the past two years, do we have a large enough pump that will drain, help drain our streets? What about the streets? The streets in my subdivision constantly have potholes. We have not taken care of the infrastructure before you start building and putting more houses, which are gonna use the sewage system, they're gonna use the drainage system, and they're gonna use the roads. There is no point in Ascension Parish in this council allowing us to have the same issues that Livingston and East Baton Rouge Parish have had. We've seen it all over the news. The only way we start having as huge an issue is if somebody allows it. Businesses, I, he I hear what the business people say, and so first and foremost, I am pro-business. As long as it does not hurt your neighborhood. You have to be a good neighbor. It's not a good neighbor if you keep putting up new buildings that hurt us. I also am for the landowners being able to do what they want with their land as long as they don't flood me. And as long as this council is making sure that those people know and the builders know that they can all be sued and anyone else who is helping this alone because of the thou shalt not flood thy neighbor law that you all mentioned last time. Businesses won't just disappear. They will come back even after the moratorium. Thank I'm you. new to this. I see my time. I'm new to this. And I know everybody thinks that I'm just wasting my time. Folks, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not going away. This is my home. 
keep building and you want to flood it, we need to see something about it. And last time, by the way, one of the gentlemen that spoke to me on the business side told me to go away and they didn't want me here and I just need to move out. That's not a good neighbor. Thank you, Ms. Vickers, so much. Ms. Vickers, will you clarify that that was not a member of this council? No, ma'am, it was someone who spoke to me. He told me and my mother-in-law outside to That's okay. Move I just out. needed to clarify for the benefit of the public that nobody on this council no. shared such sentiment no, with you. No, ma'am, no one on this council has, but I want us to all be Thank good neighbors. You. Absolutely. Mr. Domain, Mr. Roy Domain. Good afternoon, and again, as Nathan said, thank you all for what we're trying to pull together here. Uh, no doubt the grand big, big picture is working with Livingston and East Baton Rouge and getting some dredging done so we can get some waterways to be able to contain more capacity. That's number one. But in the meantime, we've got to take the approach of what can we do to benefit the people that are here. We're seeing stuff that's risen. We understand what happened in 2016, as Nathan shared, in the floodplain, uh, the two foot above BFE has proven positive, keeping folks dry. Okay, we agree with that. Uh, I agree 100% with the zero net fill. We're going to have to do some pier and beam construction. It can be done tastefully. It can be done correctly. I've done it personally for folks. It is a positive. The fact of the matter is that, yes, when we're in some of those zones, uh, in, that, in that flood area, it does cost more to build. Unfortunately, the value in those areas is not very substantial. And unfortunately, that by itself puts a negative when meeting with a developer and a developer says, I can't go into that area and develop it. It's not going to be cost effective. And so because we can't, we're not getting the appraisals out. We're going to have a negative effect there. So the bottom line is I don't see that the moratorium being a benefit to saying, okay, no more residential development until we get something laid down on a good ordinance. I think our goal here is while we're waiting to work the detailing out, we've got to take it and put it in action fast, not just asking GSA to look at what it's doing for a development, but even all the individual sites that we just see popping up. We've got to bring that down into zero net mitigated fill, and then it's fair for everybody, okay? And if that client, that owner, says, all right, well, you know, all right, it's, it's going to cost. If I go build a three-foot pad and spend sixteen to $18,000, it's what it takes for me to build a home on pier and beam for that much money more. Yes, I could have built it on a slab for less in a non-flood zone area, but that's not where the property is. And for me to keep a floor dry for the people living in it, they got to get up to that point. And so I think that the moratorium is not our answer, but I think we need to move on a fill ordinance that is positive, that is correct for all of us, and all of us participate, and I think that's great, and, and, and just make it to where, hey, we've really got to put implementation to how we are going to implore that for the individual residents so that all these anthills aren't just popping up, and that is aggravating our fellow neighbor. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Domain. All right. Any, uh, I, I do want to limit. I've asked all of the councilmen to understand that I'm going to make one round tonight. This is a discussion. Uh, we're, it's, it, the purpose of putting this on the agenda as a discussion was to encourage you. Travis uh, sought this uh, moratorium on fill in the floodplain, and he in, is going to assist uh, also in writing that and uh, with our legal counsel and perhaps other councilmen. And so we want some input to him and to other councilmen and the, our legal staff what we're looking for. And so if you have ideas on what you would hope to see in a moratorium on fill, then in the floodplain, then please uh, say so, uh, express your, your thoughts, share those with Travis and the rest of the community. And uh, if, if you don't have to, if you don't have anything, you don't have to talk. So. Any comments that anyone wants to make? Mr. Dawson. Um, do I, first, I want to say is I'm in, I'm in favor of this moratorium. You know, I don't uh, normally support things that, that uh, hurt businesses, and, and I don't think that in the long run or even in the short term this will. That we have 3,000 lots that are approved in Ascension Parish right now that people can go build on. So, 
I mean, that and what we were told at the Finance Committee that that was about three plus years of, of supply. So, you know, and we're hopeful here that we can get something done within the next three or four weeks. But I think we do, you know, unfortunately, we need to incentivize ourselves and that, you know, we we want this to be done. We want to have an ordinance for fill. We want to have a fill ordinance that, that has places limitation. And if we don't uh, put a hammer over our own heads, then then we tend to dilly dally, you know. So uh, I'm I'm one that's in favor of this, and and I uh, think that you know it's important that we have the caveat that it's a term of time, as I think Travis has already had that in there, and that you know either a term of time, some fairly short, intermediate time period, or the adoption of this field ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Dawson, for your comments. Anyone else have any comments or <coughs> feedback? Mr. Satterley. Yes, and thank you for, and I'll, it'll, I accept one term, one turn. Um, I, too, rise to speak in favor of the moratorium. I agree with Mr. Dawson and other people that have stated this on this dais. It will not hurt AP one iota. It will be a very temporary setback at best. And in fact, if we can do these things as quick as we believe we can do them, it might even last for weeks if we eventually enact it, depending on what happens now with this newly established sub-veto committee to the presidential appointed committee. But I want to go on record tonight to, first of all, I'm going to out Miss Vickers. You heard her talk in Dallasonville. She's spoken to me several times prior to that. And again tonight, for being brave enough to come up here and share her personal experiences with her and her neighbors. And I'm going to out her in this way by saying that she's not only a constituent in my district, she's a neighbor. She lives across the street from my subdivision, Greenbrier Estates, right across Perkins Road, Perkins Road. And I want to confirm my personal experiences and show how they parallel to what that brave young lady just said. Like in Ms. Vickers' subdivision, I had none, absolutely no measurable water in August 2016 of the so-called Great Flood in Ascension Parish. Not, no, no standing holding waters in my front of my backyard. But I, too, didn't come in my house like the two or three neighbors Ms. Vickers, Vickers talked about right across the street, came within inches of flooding my home, and as I've already testified publicly, it did cause me several thousand dollars worth of damage in my non-peer elevated garage area. So to me, she's absolutely right. I don't care what engineering models, whatever we do, whatever, we are contributing man-made to quote acts of God, force majeures, whatever you want to call it, when we have quote thousand year rain events. In fact, I absolutely detest that term, and I've said it before, because in the past, when I first started to serve, it was a 25 year event, then it was 50, then it was 100, then it's 500, it's 1,000. What are we gonna tell the people next time? It's a 2,000 year event? <laughs> this madness must stop, Madam Chairwoman. So, I agree with Ms. Vickers on one final point. The state had it right back in the 1800s, the thou shalt not flood thy neighbor's law the dominant serving stuff that I've discussed before. We keep building these things up, Ms. Christie alluded to it, in floodplains, only to make servient properties dominant. Then that floods surrounding neighbors. Then we bring another subdivision in right next to that in the same floodplain, and we build it up even higher, a bigger, t taller anthill than another, and the two previous ones now are, ser are, are servient to that one, and the water's running off of them. That's absolutely crazy. We ought to be able to, at a parish level, with our ordinance, however it's going to morph into in whatever style it takes, take and copy some of that wisdom. Now, I have asked repeatedly, as Mr. Dawson has, to Jerome Fournier, our planning director, with our existing law, do you advocate, do you condone, are you comfortable with unlimited fill as we, we currently have in, in our ordinance, ordinances? And all I get is, well, the administration's not. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking for some professional to get up to that microphone or get in front of these two committees now that are out there with the money being spent on them and answering that question very clearly. Now, I've been told it's not a simple yes, no answer. Bull dinkies. It is a simple answer. 
I'm uncomfortable with it, and I'm not afraid to say that. I will readily admit I'm not an engineer, but we cannot continue to have six, seven, eight, ten feet of fill brought in. It's absolutely mind-boggling to me. Because where's it going to end? 10, 20 years from now, is it going to be 15, 20 feet of fill? What are we trying to do? Reinvent, quote, our non-existent coastline? <laughs> we can. I trust we will, Madam Chairwoman, do better. And I thank everyone for listening. Mr. Satterley, I'm doing all I can do on this, I promise you. Um, OK. So any further comments? Mr. Lambert. Yeah, Mr. O'Neill. Um, yes, everything is legal on this moratorium as far as the purpose of why we As long as you have it. the time and the purpose, yes. So everything's in, in place with that. Right. Any other questions or comments? All right. That's the discussion that we're going to have about this. I thank you gentlemen very much for participating. And we will move along to item number, and the, to the public for their comments. And we'll move along now to item number 14, an introduction of an ordinance to declare surplus and transfer pursuant to, the, to a cooperative endeavor agreement with Fire Dis Protection District number 3, a 1997 Ford LT VIN number 1, F, D, L, F, 4, 7, F, 0, V, E, B, <coughs> Zero two four one seven. Motion introduced. Have a motion by Councilman Benny Johnson to introduce. Item number fifteen: an introduction of an ordinance, budget amendment number five, to amend the 2019 budget. Okay. Motion introduced. Have a motion by Councilman Dempsey Lambert to introduce. Moving on to public hearing ordinances. Item number sixteen: reading of an ordinance to amend the Ascension Parish Code of Ordinances, Chapter Six. Buildings and Building Regulations, no, Article 4, Plumbing Code, Division 2. <coughs> Gentlemen, do we need to, is there something we need to be talking about publicly? Sidebar. Sidebar. You remind me of my college <laughs> professor days, Terry. <laughs> I, I, I'm, it's in, I can't Shh, read, listen, and speak at the same time, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know exactly where I am now. Plumbing Code, Division 2. Permits and inspections to add section 6-209, reinstatement of electrical service. O'Neill. Uh, purpose to amend Ascension Parish Code of Ordinances, Chapter 6, Buildings and Building Regulations, Article 6, Plumbing Code, Division 2, Permits and Inspections to add section 6-209, reinstatement of electrical services. Okay. Whereas Ascension Parish Local Government Subdivision is defined by Article 6, Section 44, Louisiana Constitution, 1973. <coughs> Whereas the Parish of Ascension is the governing and responsible body over buildings and, regula and, and building regulations. Whereas Article 6 of the Home Rule Charter of Ascension Parish, which is the parish adopted May 4th, 1993, identifies the process and manner in which to adopt ordinances regulating the lands of this parish. Now, therefore, be it ordained the Ascension Parish Government Authority that the Code of Ordinances of Ascension Parish Board, Board Ascension Parish, Chapter 6, Buildings and Regulations, Article 6, Plumbing Code, Division 2, Permits and Inspections be amended to add Section 6209, Reinstatement of Electrical Services, more fully described in Attached Exhibit A, attached here to and made a part hereof. In the event any portion of this ordinance is ever held invalid or unconstitutional for any reason by for any reason by any court of competent jurisdiction over it, such portions shall be deemed separate, distinct, and independent provisions, shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions of the ordinance. This ordinance shall be full effect and submitted by law and the ordinance and been submitted to a vote. The vote thereon was as follows. Motion to open public second. hearing. I have a motion by Councilman John Cagnolotti and a second by Councilman Todd Lambert to open a public hearing. Motion closed. I have a motion second by closed. Councilman Cagnolotti and a second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert to close the public hearing. Move the ordinance. Madam I have a Chairman. motion by Councilman Todd Lambert and a second by Councilman John Cagnolotti to move the ordinance. Are there any questions? Mr. Dawson. O'Neill and is uh, attachment A, and is there just a second sheet there? Is that attachment A? It's not labeled. Well, the reinstatement of electrical services is is A. That's it right there. That's what the language is. So where does it say attachment A? Well, it doesn't huh? say it on it, but that is a, that's the attachment. Second page. Well, the ordinance says exhibit more fully described than exhibit a that is exhibit a which is which is included but it's not labeled as exhibit a it is on the written one 
Oh, it is. It's just not in Nova. Okay. Okay. Great. So, any uh, any further questions or comments well, on item number eighteen? Well, Are there any objections? <laughs> Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number nineteen: a reading of an ordinance to add section. 13-23 water service charges is charges to the Ascension Parish Code of Ordinances. Mr. Parrington. Add section 13-23 water to chapter 13 occupational license taxes regulations article 1 in general the Ascension Parish Code of Ordinances. Whereas section 602 enactment of an ordinance permits the parish to make and amend an ordinance as it may deem necessary and proper for good government order and protection of persons and property for the preservation of the public health safety and welfare of the parish and its inhabitants. Whereas the Parish Council of the Central Parish desired to add section 13-23 water to chapter 13 occupational license taxes and regulations article 1 in general of the Central Parish Code of Ordinances. Now therefore be it ordained by the Central Parish Governing Authority of the Parish of Ascension State of Louisiana to add section 13-23 water to chapter 13 occupational license taxes and regulations article 1 in general of the Central Parish Code of Ordinances is further described in exhibit A attached here to and made a part hereof. Biddy. Section, subsection, sentence, clause, phrase, or portion of this ordinance is for any reason held invalid or unconstitutional by any court of competent any court of or federal state agency or competent jurisdiction. Such portion shall be deemed separate, distinct, and independent provisions and shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions of hereof. This ordinance shall be in full effect as submitted by law. The ordinance has been submitted to a vote. The vote thereon was as follows. Open public comment. I have a motion by Councilman Satterley and a second by Councilman Todd Lambert to open the public hearing. Motion to close. Motion by Councilman Satterley and second. second by Councilman Lambert to close the public hearing. Move the ordinance. I have a motion by Councilman Satterley second. to move the ordinance, a second by Councilman Benny Johnson. Are there any questions? Mr. No, after this, I, I want to address you, Madam Chair. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly allow that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are there any questions on this, on item number 21? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Before we have an adjournment, Mr. Oliver Joseph wants to speak on, to me. On, <laughs> Mr. O'Neill. Yes, sir. We, we will go back to um, the previous ordinance on electricity service. Yes. Okay. You say there's an exhibit A on that? That's what the attachment. That second page yeah. wasn't labeled in, it wasn't labeled in Novus apparently, but it was in the written well, document. He showed me the next ordinance. Yeah. Oh, he I did. Mean, it wasn't. It wasn't that ordinance. Oh, you got one. It's labeled. Okay, it's not. It's that's not. not a, that's not labeled. It's not. Well, how you know it's Exhibit A if it's not labeled? We just want to verify that. All right. You want to verify you. Six two o nine. That attachment is Exhibit A. That's yes, right. yes, sir. That is that is what the, the secretary, who is the authority on all things in Nova, said. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Bill just over here motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We are adjourned. Have a